You would have never seen such a violent escape plan before. 50 prisoners devised a worm plan to dig a 262-foot-long tunnel beneath the prison. Inside the prison, the inmates tore newspapers into 160 pieces and added 24 ounces of water, ensuring each piece fully absorbed the moisture. Bob brought 49 eggs. James cracked them all into a bucket, even mixed the eggshells into the bucket. Then, they added three pounds of crushed stones and one pound of flour, mixing everything thoroughly to create a large lump of clay. James molded the clay to fit the size of the hole in the ceiling and used it to block the opening. They then made white paint using toothpaste and flour and painted over the seams. They took a poster of a beautiful woman and pinned it over the hole to conceal it from view. At this moment, guards suddenly came to search. James and his teammates quickly cleaned up the remaining debris, wiped themselves clean, and washed their hands in a hurry. They also had to clean the dirt from their nails. Just as the prison guards opened the door, James and his group emerged. The guard noticed their anxious expressions. He grabbed the curtain and wanted to conduct a thorough search. They lifted the mattress, shook every book, afraid that there might be something hidden inside. They threw everything on the floor. When the guards saw the poster, one of them said, this is nice, I'll take it. Then, he reached for the poster covering the hole in the ceiling. At that critical moment, he hesitated, because he thought the woman on the poster had too many clothes on. So he didn't take it off. The prisoners managed to pass the inspection this way. As for why they didn't dig underground, but instead made a hole in the ceiling. It turned out that they were all political prisoners here, and the hole was the key to their escape. On the third day of their imprisonment, the leader, Manny, along with James and Bob, planned to dig a tunnel to escape with just the three of them. They measured the distance with their feet. It was approximately five feet per two steps. The total distance from their room to the outside the prison was 262 feet. Digging a tunnel of this length would produce at least 50 tons of soil. How would they deal with it later? On the fifth day of their imprisonment, the worm plan officially began. They tapped the wall with a hammer handle and kicked it to find the weakest part by listening to the sound. They used a rope to mark the distance accurately and took out a saw blade bought from a fellow inmate to start cutting the wall. They cut 11 inches each day and used flour and toothpaste to create white paint, which they applied to the wall. No one could detect any flaws. Escaping the prison was very difficult. The three of them had to use a saw to slowly cut through the wall. On the 56th day, the corner of the wall was completely cut open. With a gentle tap, red bricks were revealed. They chipped away the inside of the bricks, then pushed in a prepared fake wall to perfectly conceal it. As for dealing with the excavated debris, James suggested opening the ceiling of the second floor. There was a hidden compartment above with an extraordinarily large space, more than enough for storing the debris. So, they teamed up with fellow inmates from the second floor cells. The total of six people formed a breakout team. However, when James began working, an unexpected inspection by the prison guards occurred. The group swiftly started cleaning up fallen bricks, tearing up newspapers, adding 49 eggs, and incorporating soil and flour to create a massive lump of clay. This clay was used to seal the hole perfectly, and was covered with a poster. The guards failed to detect any issues, and the prisoners narrowly passed the inspection. At this point, it was the Groundhog Escape Plan. The six prisoners took turns using screwdrivers to chip away at the wall bit by bit. Progress was slow due to the lack of proper tools, but they persevered every day. As they made progress, they stored the debris in bags. At the entrance, a lookout signaled using hand gestures to ensure no guards were approaching. If the coast was clear, they would proceed to the second floor, remove the ceiling, transport the debris to the hidden compartment, and finally apply a special white paint before covering it with a poster. This process was repeated, with some digging, some transporting, and others on lookout duty. The plan proceeded smoothly, but occasional unexpected events did occur. One day, while three people were digging in a corner of the room, the lookout outside suddenly came in and informed them that the guards were on their way. The three had to hurriedly push the mattresses and debris together, use a table to conceal them, and collect scattered bricks into containers. James pretended to be reading a book. Bob pretended to be working. All preparations were in place. Manny opened the door. As soon as he sat down, the guards came into the room. Fortunately, the guards came to look for other prisoners and did not notice anything unusual in the room. After the guards left, all prisoners left a sigh of relief. On the 77th day, they measured the tunnel with a rope, only to discover that they had dug merely six feet. At this rate, it would take an eternity to complete. So, they gathered their trusted fellow inmates and fully disclosed the worm plan. Initially, the fellow inmates were skeptical, but their doubts vanished when the three moved aside the false wall and revealed the tunnel. From that point on, the fellow inmates believed, and one by one, they decided to join the effort. How could more than 50 people escape together? The more people, the higher the risk of exposure. 
So, they established rules. Rule 1. Everyone takes shifts digging the tunnel. Four groups of inmates would take turns digging for two hours each day. Rule 2. The hidden compartment acted like a natural amplifier, so absolute silence was required during work. Rule 3. Everyone had to thoroughly clean themselves after shifts, including fingernail crevices. Rule 4. Small holes were dug between various cells to facilitate the removal of dirt. Rule 5. The lookout at the entrance had to be extremely vigilant. If a guard approached, they had to signal their teammates promptly. Rule 6. They had to participate in daily activities to avoid arousing suspicion. Even if they were exhausted from digging, despite the meticulous plan, some inmates began to suspect. While Manny was playing soccer, Phil expressed his desire to join the team. Manny refused to acknowledge the plan, but Phil immediately exposed him, pointing out that his nails weren't cleaned. Consequently, Phil joined the escape team. The plan continued smoothly. Surprisingly, an accident happened. The guards unexpectedly began inspection on a large scale. While the inmates were still digging the tunnel, the guards ordered all inmates to exit within two minutes. The lookout immediately alerted their teammates. Those inside the tunnel heard the message and began crawling forward as if possessed, making a desperate effort. The guards, full of vigor, overturned tables as they passed by. Meanwhile, the inmates in the rooms were scrambling to put on clothes and arrange their beds. Just as the guards were about to arrive, Manny took the initiative and provoked the guards intentionally. Why don't you send the dogs? Rat. He and his teammates then engaged in a fight with the guards, buying time for their companions in the tunnel. The companions emerged, applied homemade white paint to seal the gaps, and used a table to cover everything. They wiped the sweat from their foreheads, and it seemed as if nothing had happened. The group of inmates was unarmed and no match for the guards. They were quickly subdued. The warden punished them by making them stand under the scorching sun naked, though Manny was locked in a small dark room and was beaten by the guards. Fortunately, the escape operation remained undiscovered. However, a new crisis emerged shortly thereafter. The inmates' tunnel for the escape was too small, and there was no airflow. During the excavation, one of their companions experienced oxygen deprivation. He fainted in the tunnel, but where there's a will, there's a way. Manny took advantage of his wife's prison visitation time and had her bring Fen leaves with her. He also borrowed a small generator from the polishing guy. They assembled a makeshift electric fan and placed it in a bucket. At the other end of the bucket, they attached a long plastic bag. When the electric fan started running, air was circulated through the plastic bag and reached the deepest part of the tunnel. With the help of the generator, they installed light bulbs in the tunnel. Now, they had both illumination and a steady supply of oxygen, which boosted the morale and productivity of the escape team. Meanwhile, their sentences had finally arrived. As political prisoners, they were all sentenced to death. Time was running out. Manny told his wife about his escape plan and asked her to find help on the outside. She quickly gathered her relatives and obtained fake identity certificates for them. These escapees were truly skilled. On the 524th day, they successfully dug a tunnel measuring 262 feet in length. The tunnel's end had already reached the outside of the prison. The worm plan was a success. They used a syringe to squeeze red liquid onto the ground, creating a signal. When the people coming to pick them up saw the red mark, they could determine the tunnel's location. However, things didn't go smoothly. One day, while they were digging the tunnel, suddenly, the light bulbs started flickering, and then the entire ground shook. It was an earthquake. Everyone hurriedly evacuated to the courtyard. Their companions in the hidden compartment were able to retreat in time, but the ones in the tunnel had difficulty moving and emerged later. Although they pretended to be injured, this still caught the attention of the guards. The warden brought in Grant to interrogate. Using threats against his family, they coerced him into secretly monitoring Manny. Manny was preparing to invite Grant to join the escape plan, but his cigarette gave him away. Manny remembered seeing only the warden use that kind of cigarette. He refrained from speaking. With everything prepared, they were only waiting for the right moment. On the 567th day in prison, the guards organized a movie screening for all inmates during the evening. At that moment, the guards' vigilance was at its lowest, making it the perfect time to make their escape. The inmates were in the process of escaping, taking advantage of the guards' inattention. They left one by one at Manny's room. They embraced each other and prayed for a successful escape. Then, one by one, they crawled into the 262-foot-long tunnel, which was now filled with 49 people. It was like they were all armored pangolins, and that was how they made their way outside. The absence of so many inmates drew the attention of Grant. He got up to go outside to investigate, but was stopped by an elderly man with leg disabilities, who happened to be Manny's companion. His physical disability meant he was destined not to leave. The elderly man held onto Grant tightly 
but he was pushed down to the ground. Grant entered the room and saw Phil in the tunnel. He instantly understood the situation and wanted to report to the warden. Phil immediately grabbed his neck and locked onto him. We've been digging this tunnel for over a year, and we can't let you mess it up. The two engaged in a struggle, and Grant fumbled for something with his hands. He picked up a sharp metal rod and thrust at Phil's shoulder. Phil, taking advantage of the situation, mounted him and started punching his face. With his injured shoulder, Phil looked towards the tunnel entrance, realizing that he couldn't climb out anymore. On the other side, the people who came to pick them up, used an iron rod to break open the tunnel entrance. The escape team crawled out one by one. They reached the designated location where they found the getaway bus and safely boarded it. By the time the guards realized, the escapees had already disappeared. The warden, upon realizing this, was infuriated, and wiped everything off his table. 49 people, 567 days, 262 feet of tunnel. During all that time, everyone had kept their mouths shut. No one leaked any information. In the end, they successfully escaped from the prison. The film concludes. The film is titled, Pacto de Fuga. In this episode, the question is, if you were to rate the escape plan's effectiveness on a scale of 0 to 100, what score would you give it? Please share your thoughts in the comments. The Worm Plan was a success. This film is based on a true story that took place in Chile. It is the largest scale prison escape operation. Escaping from prison is already impressive, but successfully escaping with 49 people is unparalleled in terms of numbers. If you enjoyed this episode, I recommend watching the original film. That concludes this episode. Remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye.